सदाशिव समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराणा आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमद्याप्तहाय दक्षिणमूर्त नम ओं सहनावत सहनौ घनक्त सह वीरकवाह तेजस्वीतमस्तुमाषा वह ये ओं शातिशाशा नारायण परोव्यक्ता दंडम व्यक्त संभव मंड सियांतस्मे लोका स्वप्तद्वीपा च मे दिनी धातु ब्रह्म संप्रोक्त जीव आख्यात प्रकृति कृषुबंतादिधातु ब्रह्मात्मे नम सो पिशादी ट्वेंटी थर्ड श्लोक इन दि सिक्स चैप्टर तम विद्या दुख संयोग वियोग योग संयुत सनिश्चयन योक्तव्य योगो निर्वीण चेत सा and uh, meaning is all <coughs> sorry anvaya dukha sanyoga viyogam tam yoga sanyitam vidya one should know and we took this uh, uh, backwards and made the sentences complete here in the earlier few shlokas because they are not complete without uh, this part that know this know this as what is called as yoga all these are kind of explanations of what this dhyana yoga is what is that finally dukha sanyoga vyogam that which is uh, the, that separation from association with dukha whatever is producing dukha is this anatma vastu and association with the anatma with ahankara bhava tadatmya sambandha and thereby mam, with mamakara with other vishayas which are also anatma one has dukha sanyoga and separation from that dukkha sanyoga that is also yoga so yoga can be seen two two ways one is union and the other is separation both can be uh, the meaning of yoga so separation from dukkha and association with sukha is yoga really how does that work separation from anatma is dukkha sanyoga yoga and association with oneself meaning remaining oneself in the shuddha swarupa that is the sukha sanyoga that is called as yoga and know that tam yoga sanyitam vidya know this to be so this should be known rather this should be known as yoga or what is called as yoga sa yoga anirvinna chetasa nischayena yoktavya should be practiced definitely be practiced by someone who is a yogi by someone who wants to be a yogi as in yoga ruda he should practice it and one who is uh, who has finished karma yoga thereby he has samatva bhava in terms of uh, the pairs of opposites but now he is going towards aikya aikya and the brahmatma aikya thereby nididhyasana should be practiced further kincha moreover or further what संकल्प प्रभवान कामान त्यक्वा सर्वान शेषत मन सेवेन्द्रिय ग्राम विनियम्य सत संकल्प प्रभवान कामान त्यक्वा सर्वान अशेषत त्यक्वा हैविंग गिवन अप ऑल द कामास कंप्लीटली विदाउट एनीथिंग रिमेनिंग विच आर विच आर दीज कामास दीज काम आर प्रभवान संकल्प प्रभवान मीनिंग those for which the source is sankalpa sankalpa here has the meaning of fancy we have some shobhana adhyasa this vishaya will bring this sukha so this kama here is kamyate iti kama it is karmani vitpatti thereby vishaya shabda sparsha uh, shabda shabda sparsha roop rasa gandha these are the vishayas towards which we have some kind of uh, imagination there is a fancy which is the source for these vishayas we indulge in those due to the uh, imagination the fancy which is not there there is a shobhana adhyasa meaning superimpose some value which is not there for example gold how does gold get its value 
all over the world we may say that based on the uh, based on the amount of gold the currency gets the value in for any nation and how does gold itself gets its value historically gold has been less and uh, for indians it comes from shastra gold gets its value from shastra but otherwise uh, the lesser the availability the value goes up now if suddenly gold becomes available in bulk its value will obviously go down now uh, what value a particular thing has is also subjective some may like gold some may like something else some may like uh, no jewelry at all all this is what shobhana adhyasa we value it for something that we think it has value of we don't uh, it is subjective it is not objective there may be a general rule that this should be valued but then each one does not value it each one has a taste for something or the other that is based on one's own fancies therefore this kamas are sankalpa prabhava sankalpa is a bahuri sankalpa uh, prabhava yesham te uh, yesham kamanam those kamas are what they are sankalpa prabhavan kaman they are sankalpa prabhava kama and in uh, dvitiya bhuvachana they will be sankalpa prabhavan kaman sarvan tyaktva sarvan sankalpa prabhavan kaman tyaktva how manasa buddhya through the buddhi man, manah here has the meaning of buddhi through buddhi through viveka asheshata and completely not uh, not by saying that okay only these things i will leave some other things not by uh, making a choice among these everything completely so asheshata tyaktva eva indriya gram viniyamyo then having given up these these vishayas and then the desire towards them should be dropped and then the indriya grama is the collection of indriyas the the group of indriya should be withdrawn so having withdrawn those viniyamya levanta indriya grama viniyamya samantata completely again from all directions meaning all the indriyas from all their respective vishayas one should withdraw and having withdrawn what should one do that is continuing in the next shloka swaya kuda uh, ellipsis there shane shane uparame buddhya dhriti grihitaya atma samstam man krutva na kinchid api chintayet what should one do so the put together it makes one anvaya uh, 24 and 25 shlokas shane shane uparame one should slowly withdraw the sense organs and then thereby the mind also should be withdrawn shamadama is mentioned here is indicated here one should slowly withdraw and what should one do not an empty mind it should be dhriti grihita it should be withdrawn through dhairya dhriti is dhairya here through dhairya it should be withdrawn all the sense organs and the mind has to be withdrawn mind should be withdrawn and the buddhi should be withdrawn and then finally atma samstam manah atma samstam krutva having made the mind to be placed having restricted it from the from moving outward and bringing it inward having placed it in one's own pratyagatma real self krutva na kinchid api chinte then one should not think about anything else meaning it's one should not uh, let uh, any other idea hijack this meditation one should not let the mind to be withdrawn uh, from the atma also and then led haywire or one may fall asleep one should be alert there and alert in the sense not to fall asleep not to let the mind to have some fancies not to indulge in the indriyas even in the mind thereby kinchid api na chintayet so uh, i made the anvaya as we saw in some exercises we did so sarvan sankalpa pravan kaman manasa asheshatha tyaktva eva indriya gram samantatah viniyamya shane shane hi dhriti grihitaya buddhya uparamet one should withdraw and then manah atma samstam krutva kinchid api na chintayet one should not think about anything else this is the anvaya of both the shlokas put together so what happened before some reason uh, this is not working let it be i was planning to mark it 
तत्र एवं आत्मसंस्थम मन कर तुम प्रवृत्त योगी वॉट शुड ही डू द योगी हू इज प्रवृत्त कर्तरिक्त वन हू इज एंगेज एंगेज टू डू वॉट सो तत्र आत्म मन आत्मसंस्थ कर्त प्रवृत्त वन हू इज एंगेज टू दट योगी हू इज एंगेज टू मेक दी माइंड मर्ज इन टू दी आत्म मर्ज इन टू आत्मा इन फिगरेटिव टू बी रिजॉल्व इन टू दी आत्मा वन इज बेसिकली समाधि योग देर इज समाधि वन हू इज प्रवृत्त द योगी हू इज एंगेज टू डू दिस और हू इज टार्गेटेड टूवर्ड्स अचीविंग दिस गोल यतो यतो निश्चरती मन चंचलम स्थिरम ततस्तो नियम ये तद आत्मन्ये वशन्नये वॉट शुड यू डू आत्मनी वशन्नये His goal is to resolve the mind into Atma. Therefore, what should he do? Atmani eva muvasham ne. That manaha mind, which is what uh, chanchala, it is chanchala. It keeps on jumping the monkey mind. It goes here and there. It we cannot keep it under control. That kind of a mind should be controlled. Yatha yatha nischarati. From uh, towards whichever object it keeps on going. it should be brought back from that one may not be engaging through the sense organs you are trying to uh, trying not to see outward trying not to hear things around you you are not tasting anything you are trying to not smell anything and you are not trying to feel the touch but still what happens the mind keeps on jumping through all of these or some fanciful ideas in the mind they keep on coming thereby mind is running haywire all the time therefore chanchalam that chanchalam asthiram which does not remain at one place at any point of time that kind of a mind so it is like uh, uh, elsewhere the comparison is given is like trying to coax a, uh, a bull with a blade of grass it's very dangerous so it can attack you similarly the mind which is trying you are trying to uh, control the mind and trying to resolve it to atma but what happens is that it tries to run everywhere the bull also will it, it can run anywhere and everywhere and it it may run towards you also thereby the comparison is given is that it is that difficult which arjuna is going to ask anyway but yato yato nischarati manaha chanchalam manaha asthiram manaha yata yata nischarati ततः ततः नियम हैविंग कंट्रोल दैट फ्रॉम और ब्रॉट इट बैक कंट्रोल एंड ब्रॉट इट अंडर कंट्रोल फ्रॉम दोज वेरी ऑब्जेक्ट्स वन हैज टू विड्रॉ एंड हैविंग विड्रॉन नियम एक आत्मनी वशम नए अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ द बुद्धि वन शुड रिजॉल्व इन टू आत्मा सो स्टेज वाइज शनै शनै इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू हैपन इन अ डे स्लोली one has to keep on doing so abhyasena and uh, through vairagya it will be possible as even bhagwan krishna will say so yata yata chanchalam asthiram manah nischarati tatha tatha niyamya etad manah atmani eva vashan nayet that is the anvaya here which we have seen in the exercises so i am not uh, revisiting these प्रशांत देन फर्दर वॉट इन कंटिन्युएशन प्रशांत मन संहनम योगिनम सुखम उत्तम उपय तिशातरजसम ब्रह्मभूतम कलमशम उपयति उपयति उत्तम सुखम उत्तम सुखम उपयति उत्तम सुख गोस टू वॉट सो उपूर्वक इणगत धातु इणगत सो दैट सुख सुख एप्रोचेस figuratively it is said i mean it's poetic the sukha whom does sukha approach sukha approach is a person who is of this type that yogi who is a yogi yogi we have seen yogi who uh, has samatva buddhi and here one who is controlling the mind and trying to resolve it into the atma thereby his antakarana is shuddha through karma yoga and then through dhyana yoga he is trying to resolve the mind so prashanta manasa that mind which can be resolved has to be shanta prakarshena shanta it should be completely calm it should not be turbulent so there were 
therefore the mind should be turbulent. Who has this mind? The yogi. Only yogi can have this kind of a mind who has done karma yoga for a sufficient length of time thereby the mind uh, listens to the buddhi. The mind knows, see the nature of the mind is to jump around which is all right. We say that oh my mind is uh, you know always keeps on doing this. That is its job. Whatever it keeps on doing that is its very job. However, whenever you want it to do something, then it should be uh, under your say. That is what control is. Control is, does not mean that the mind should not work at all. The mind should do what it does best, which is giving you options. See, if the buddhi, buddhi is decisive. You can't uh, come to something new in Vyavahara and then suddenly decide something. You have to weigh your options. Therefore, mind has to place options. Uh, all sorts of options should be available for the buddhi to pick from. Otherwise, it will not be well ascertained. The buddhi will ascertain. But for the buddhi to ascertain, the varieties are made available by the mind. So, mind should do all that. Jumping here and there, what if, what if, what if, all these doubts which are created. When you are planning, I am talking about Shuddha Vyavahara. Yogi does not have these problems, but I am saying that that kind of a mind, uh, uh, that kind of a job is what the mind plays, which is the role of the mind. Now slowly, shanai shanai, once it is withdrawn from everything, then slowly it will lose all this, all these vasanas, all these sankalpas will go away and then it will completely be under the control. But it will happen slowly. Otherwise, what it is doing in the intermediary stage, it should do. It should behave like a mind. It will behave like a mind. And there is no reason for anyone to get disheartened. Because that's how the mind is. The mind has a role to play. Now, when you want to meditate, that time it should not do what it uh, is, is born to do. Or what it is created to do. That time it should listen to you. Meaning the buddhi. So, as long as the mind is under control of the buddhi and it remains calm during the meditation, initially during the meditative periods of time that you set a time to meditation during the practice sessions, it should, uh, as long as it is under your say, it is okay. And slowly, uh, effortlessly, it will, it will come to be so. So, that is said here, Prashanta Manasam. Prashanta Manasa is... Uh, a person who is having a prashanta mana. So, prashanta manaha yasya sa prashanta manasa, manaha and then in second case it will become prashanta manasam. Hi enam, enam yoginam prashanta manasam uttamam sukham upayati. Uttama sukha is a karta which is said to be karta in the sense, uh, vyakrana karta here in the karta of the sentence. It approaches, upayati means, upayati means it approaches this yogi who has a calm mind and calm mind and not getting agitated, it, it is not uh, drawn outward by rajas. So, prashanta manasa is, means calm, but calm does not mean that there is a, there is no possibility of going out. But here shanta rajasam says that the rajas has become shanta meaning he, the mind does not prod the person to work, oh let me do this. All the plans which have been made are let outside. What we have seen at the end of the uh, fifth chapter, where uh, Bhagwan Krishna had uh, said in Sankshepa that uh, he had said that Bahikritva, um, what was the verse? Uh, whatever is outside, he said, he, he says, leave it outside. So I forgot the verse. So, uh, I forgot the beginning of the verse. Okay, it's gone to the Prathamadhyaya, unfortunately. Okay, anyway, so just because I re recall that, I just wanted to quote that. Uh, okay, it's easier to look up in the book. I have a book somewhere here. So, uh, all those which are outside, you let them remain outside. So, that, that's what Shanta Rajasa means. Shanta Rajasa is a person whose Rajas is not prodding him to act. 
he leaves all that which was planned and which is going to be uh, which is planned for the future all of that is set aside during that meditative session at, at least during that time and here in the case of uh, the, the shloka proper it is the yatihi who has taken sannyasa so you have seen that uh, who has withdrawn completely withdrawn from all social activity also thereby uh, but thereby he will have prashanta mana uh, more or less but then he has to train his mind to remain so thereby shantarasa it should not even prod him to do any other activity during that time be it uh, be it an activity of sanyasi so shantarajasam brahma bhutam akalmasham and the person is uh, brahma bhuta means he has attained brahma he is as he has attained brahma because he knows this aikya so aparoksha jnana he has now he wants to practice nididhyasana to remove the viparita bhavana also and akalmasham akalmasham is also the the person this yogi is brahma bhuta and he is akalmasha akalmasha meaning apapa he does not have any papa all that has go, gone by karma yoga of course i mean uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, purity is growing uh, because akalmasha here although it means that his uh, he has uh, shuddha antakarana still vasana kshaya may or may not be there and through this samadhi abhyasa vasana kshaya also is targeted thereby uh, uttamam sukham uh, kam upaiti prashanta manasam yoginam who is what shanta rajasam brahma bhutam akalmasham prashanta manasam hi enam yoginam upaiti so that's the anvaya here uttam hi sukham enam akalmasham prashanta enam uh, akalmasham prashanta manasam shanta rajasam brahma bhutam yoginam upaiti so that's the anvaya there further yunjan nevam sadatmanam yogi vigata kalmashah sukhena brahma samsparsham atyantam sukhamashnute then what happens through this samadhi yoga atyantam sukhamashnute this yogi attains attains atyanta sukha yogi atyantam sukhamashnute that is a basic sentence and then who is this yogi who is vigata kalmashah he is uh, papas are gone through karma yoga through nitya nimitta ka karma pre sanyasa and post sanyasa through the dhyana practice through uh, the jhana yoga and in the case of grahastha uh, karma yoga is continuing therefore vigata kalmasha this yogi what should you sada atmanam yunjan evam yunjan the way it has been said having withdrawn from all the indriyas having withdrawn all the indriyas having withdrawn the mind from all the indriyas then having withdrawn the mind and uh, focusing it on to the atma tattva which is what brahma tattva brahmatma tattva thereby sada atmanam yunjan evam yunjan yogi who is vigata kalmasha yogi what what does he attain sukha vasnute he attains that bliss which is what atyantam so atyantam sukham is that which cannot be experienced it is not actually experience uh, that uh, Uh, the way we say that it is uh, vishaya sukha that we experience similar it is not experienceable happiness because it is the experiencer of all experiences so knower of all knowledges that yogi cannot experience himself but what happens is that since nothing else no other kama is there therefore the atma sukha atma swarupa sukha itself manifests in the antakarana and thereby he experiences that sukha which is the reflected sukha from one's own swarupa therefore it is said brahma samsparsham brahma samsparsham sukham because he is now uh, he is resolving the mind into oneself the atma and he gets brahma samsparsha brahmana samsparsham as though touched by brahman that sukha is as though that sukha touched by brahma swarupa and that brahma swarupa you get because atma swarupa is brahma swarupa otherwise the yogi who is merging the antakarana into atma that antakarana cannot have the brahma samsparsha sukha unless atma is brahma only if atma is brahma then mind touching the atma 
figuratively as in merge in atma will be merge in brahma only then uh, will it get the brahma sansparsha sukha otherwise atma sansparsha sukha would be different from brahma sansparsha sukha so if you look at this 27th and 28th shloka together you see there is a uh, mahavakya it's a mahavakya where atma and brahma are said to be one there is no difference because the yogi what is he trying to do he is trying to uh, not 27 uh, this 26 so starting from 26 atmani eva vasham nahet kim manah manah atmani eva vasham nahet he is trying to resolve the mind into atma and then what kind of sukha approaches him is said here and that sukha is touched by brahma as though touched by brahma why by brahma because atma is brahma otherwise not possible so through this uh, analysis of anyatha anupapatti you can see that there is uh, arthapatti pramana otherwise it is not possible otherwise that sukha cannot be brahma sansparsha sukha if atma is different from brahma otherwise uh, this brahma sansparsham atyantam brahma sansparsham sukham will have no meaning at all unless atma is same as brahma so this is how we can make sense out of the advaita tattva revealed in gita here so sada and not once in a while sada always because there is nothing else to do when everything has become one then he the yogi has no kama there is no vishaya to do have kama about there is nothing other than himself therefore he has aparoksha jnana there and now he is trying to remain in that which will give him sukha which is the pursuit for every jantu every jantu every jiva has the same pursuit knowingly or unknowingly in all pursuits in all pursuits the uh, goal is to seek happiness to avoid dukha and to attain sukha thereby he already has this sukha which is manifest in him now in his antakarana by remaining with himself why would he yearn to go outside he wouldn't therefore it is a sada atmanam yunjan evam yunjan yogi vigata kalmasha yogi atyantam brahma sansparsham sukham asnute and practicing it for a long while what happens sukhena asnute sukhena means easily easily he attains that bliss so that's the anvaya here evam sada atmanam yunjan vigata kalmasha yogi atyantam brahma sansparsham sukham sukhena asnute easily he attains so sukham sukhena asnute sukham sukham asnute will also be uh, have the same meaning this sukha here is happiness which is the karma for asnute whereas sukhena here or sukham itself would have been this sukha sukhena so tritiya or in dvitiya both will, will work but sukham and sukhena are separated here with dvitiya and tritiya this dvitiya here sukham asnute is Uh, the karma sukha is the karma where sukha is that bliss or happiness which is brahma sansparsham sukham uh, karma to asnute and sukhena is adverbial to asnute where sukhena means easily he attains it easily idanim yogasya yat phalam brahmaikatva darshanam yat phalam that phala is what which is that phala idan now yogasya yat phalam what is the phala of yoga brahmaikatva darshana this ekatva darshana between brahma and oneself so brahmaikatva can be seen in two ways brahmaikatva is brahmana ekatva that brahma is one there is no other brahma only brahma is there and there is only one brahma and only brahma is there that ekatva means there is no nothing other than brahma so that's one way or you have to say atmanah brahmaikatva darshan so atma and brahma are one both ways meaning is the same atma and brahma are the same so brahmaikatva darshanam jnanam uh, through shravana manan nididhyasana so shravana phala is the same manana phala is the same nididhyasana phala is also the same in the end what does shravana do shravana takes away the um, pramana shanka what is the pramana trying to say shabda pramana what is the ved vedanta trying to say what is the end goal then once you know that eka vakyata is the uh, tatpare of the shruti then that is the shravana phala what is the manana phala the samshya regarding those 
regarding that eka vakya tha that is taken away in manana because one may feel that yes this is what the shruti is saying all right but i don't know how will i get it whether i am that brahma there these doubts have to be resolved by continuously contemplating on the shruti vakya through shravana and keeping the manana going contemplation going that will complete the manana stage and manana siddhi or manana phala is what the ekatva darshana which is there that becomes samshaya rahita samshaya goes away where prameya shanka goes away that brahma is what it is being talked about it is atma it is me and then there is viparita bhavana which goes away by nididhyasana viparita bhavana is due to the uh, the vasanas which are being have been there since ananta janma which tell us that we are a limited being and they bring about these obstacles to this the brahmaikatva darshan itself being in that therefore brahmaikatva darshana is the phala at all three stages one with respect to what shruti is trying to say another with respect to the doubts which uh, don't let me understand that i am also the same thing although shruti is saying that i have doubts regarding at how i can be that brahma that goes in manana and nididhyasana takes away the viparita bhavana whereby brahmaikatva darshana siddhi happens there therefore idanim yogasya yat phalam brahmaikatva darshanam sarva samsara vichheda karanam tat pradarshate and what is that brahmaikatva darshanam nothing else remains to be done after that sarva samsara vichheda karana it is moksha which takes away which is the cause which is the cause for vicheda of sarva samsara which which uh, destroys all samsara really and thereby being the cause for destruction of all samsara tat pradarshate that phala of yoga is shown in the next shloka which says sarva bhutastam atmanam sarva bhutani chatmani ekshate yoga yukta atma sarvatra samadarshanah sarva bhutastam atmanam sarvabhutani cha atmani ikshate ikshate spashyati who yoga yukta atma who is yogena yuk, yuktam no not yuktam yuk, atma is uh, pullinga so yogena yuktah atma is equal to antakaranam yasya sah yoga yukta atma so one whose mind is is associated with yoga or which has so yukta is he has got success in yoga this antakarana is completely resolved due to yoga completely resolved as in it does not go here and there any more thereby samatva bhava is there it, it understands this uh, antakarana is not tainted with uh, dvaita bhava so that that would be the end meaning there how so sarva bhutastam atmanam ekshate sarvabhutani atmani cha ekshate who yoga yukta atma ekshate and sarvatra samadarshana so sarvatra samadarshana this person is what it has samatva bhava through and through everywhere how so and that is explained here as that uh, both ways atmanam mean oneself sarvabhutastam he sees as being in all uh being in all creatures or all beings everywhere he sees oneself and other way also sarvabhutani cha atmani ekshate he sees everything all is so bhuta there can mean uh, sentient beings it can also mean uh, the insentient so sentient and insentient both he sees himself in all the sentient and insentient this is the first half and then first half as in the first uh, quarter and then the Uh, second quarter says that sarvabhutani cha atmani ekshate sarvabhutani meaning all the uh, sentient and insentient things he sees in himself thereby samatva bhava is there there is aikya there is sarvatma bhava so this is what is sarvatma bhava and thereby this yoga yukta atma sarvatra samadarshana bhavati thereby he becomes samadarshana he has no difference with the there is no dvaita bhava at all that is the anvay here sarvabhutastam atmanam 
आत्मानम सर्वभूतस्तम एंड सर्वभूतानि आत्मनी च ईक्षते हु योग युक्तात्मा योग युक्तात्मा आत्मानम सर्वभूतस्तम सर्वभूतानि आत्मनी च ईक्षते एंड देन देर बाय सर्वत्र समदर्शन भवती और यू कैन से सर्वत्र समदर्शन सन ईक्षते योग युक्तात्मा आत्मा सर्वोत्सव आत्मनी चील विल मेक इट दिस वे विल से सन दर्शन सन मेनी अंडवेज आर पॉसिबल विल कीप इट सिंपल योग योग युक्तात्मा सर्वत्र समदर्शन सन आत्मान सर्वभूतस्तम सर्वभूता आत्मनी चीक्षते ही सीज हिमसेल्फ एवरीवेर एंड ही सीज All of the things in himself. Etasya atmai kattu darshanasya phalam uchyate. What is the result of this sarvatma bhava? Seeing atma as one everywhere. See what it means by saying that he sees everything in himself and he sees himself everywhere means he does not see anything other than himself. Meaning he does not see anything other than brahmatma. He does not cognize anything other than brahmatma. There is no division at all, so there is no seeing really. There is no the seeing is figurative. Whenever there is some division initially, after this samadhi or uh, this aikya jnana, aparoksha jnana, then due to the earlier tendencies, there is some division created, and that shaneshani that will also go shaneshani. So whenever he sees it. If at all he makes a bheda in shabda rasa, rupa rasa, ganda, anything, uh, shabda sparsha, rupa rasa, ganda, what happens is that immediately the aikya jnana uh, resolves all that. Thereby the sarvatma bhava also gradually becomes very easy and it becomes his natural state. Thereby etasya atmaika tu darshanasya phala muchyate. What happens when that uh, gradually settles down to such an extent that he does not Have to make an effort. So what is that? Samadhi becomes sahaja, which Bhagwan Ramana Maharshi used to call as sahaja samadhi. Although Shastra talks about Yoga Shastra talks about uh, uh, the two types of samadhi, and in Vedanta also two types of samadhi, which are same as samprajnyata samadhi or savikalpa ka samadhi, or asamprajnyata samadhi or nirvikalpa ka samadhi. These are the two types of samadhi. But uh, when there is no Uh, separate uh, effort taken to withdraw and remain in solitude and only then having samadhi but when the samadhi becomes so sahaja that there is sarvatma bhava and dvaita there is no dvaita bhava at all that is called as sahaj samadhi and uh, jivan mukta state so uh, bhagwan ramana maharshi said that as uh, tagged it as sahaj samadhi Of course, it is mentioned in the shastras elsewhere, but it's a very uh, uh, nice tag, sahaja samadhi, because it is very easy for a jnani that he remains in that state. There is no dvaita at all. Thereby, etasse atmai kattu darshanasya phalam uchchate yovam pashyati sarvatra sarvancha mai pashyati tasya hanna pranashyami sachame na pranashyati. Now look at this uh, beautiful shloka. सर्वभूतस्थम आत्मानम सर्वभूतानि च आत्मनी योगयुक्तात्मा ईक्षते सर्वत्र समदर्शन सन ईक्षते ही सीज एवरीथिंग इन हिमसेल्फ एंड ही सीज हिमसेल्फ इन एवरीथिंग दिस इज ट्वेंटी नाइन श्लोक व्हाट इज थर्टी श्लोक यो मां पश्य सर्वत्र सर्वंच मयी पश्य कृष्णा इज सेइंग दैट वन हु सीज मी एवरीवेयर and he sees everything in me the earlier shloka is when of uh, this this person this yoga yuktaatma yogi is seeing everything in himself and he is seeing everywhere in 30th shloka he is seeing krishna everywhere parmatma everywhere and everything in parmatma what is the difference so you see 29th and 30th also are clearly uh, they are uh, mahavakyas put together they are mahavakya tasya hum na pranashyami sachana me pranashyati 
we'll see what this means but you look at the first half yomam pashyati sarvatra sarvanchamai pashyati versus sarvabhutastam atmanam sarvabhutani cha atmani here one is seeing oneself in everything here one is seeing paramatma in everything here in 29th one is seeing uh, everything in oneself and in 30th one is seeing everything in paramatma because mai there krishna is seeing in krishna and here atmani in oneself so atma and this krishna paramatma are one otherwise how can you have this uh, this kind of a uh, yoga where one thing is said that he should doing he should be doing and then he says that one who does so with parmatma as the uh, as a replacement for atma so thereby also you see there is a mahavakya it is a giveaway there it's a giveaway yomam pashyati sarvatra one who sees me everywhere and one who sarvancha mai pashyati one who sees everything in me tasya aham na pranashyami what is this pranashyami does anyone recall the the prapurvaka this prapurvaka nash dhatu is there so who knows the meaning of nash dhatu in the dhatu pata pranashyami generally you would say uh, uh, i na pranashyami mean i i won't destroy but what is the nash dhatu meaning dhatu pata meaning adarshana yeah so nasha darshane so what is nasha darshane it is adarshana adarshana means i will not become invisible for him i will not, i will never become invisible for him means he you will never stop having parmatma darshana because one who sees parmatma everywhere one who sees everything in parmatma and he is actually left with himself because he is a yogi he is not seeing sarvam or parmatma everywhere he is seeing himself everywhere he is seeing everything in himself and he has this aikya jnana brahma brahmaikatva brahmaikatva darshana thereby he is merging everything in himself he is merging his antakarana in himself he has merged the entire prapancha in himself and he sees himself everywhere he sees parmatma everywhere he sees no difference between himself and parmatma thereby wherever he is parmatma is there wherever everything is that's where parmatma is there because he is everywhere parmatma is everywhere there is nothing other than parmatma there is nothing other than atma therefore tasya aham na pranashyami sachamena pranashyati si aham na pranashyami tasya aham na pranashyami i will uh, adarshanam uh, so uh, adarshanam na gamishyami tasya aham i will not become adrashta for him i will always be seen to him that is sufficient but sachamena pranashyati he will never become invisible from so that bhakti bhava is also there meaning that he will always remain in my sight so you can see bhakti bhava is also there but uh, with aikya you see there is no possibility of anyone becoming adrashta to to the other because both ways because there is no other there is no parmatma separate from you and you are not separate from parmatma because there is aham brahmasmi that bhava has made sarvatma bhava there is no parmatma separate from me i am not separate from parmatma the jagat is not separate from me i am not separate from jagat and the jagat is not different from parmatma the parmatma is not different from jagat because the entire prapancha is nothing but the appearance of brahmatma that brahma who is the creator who is who i know as me thereby uh, this prapancha is a mere appearance nama roopatmaka it is just appearance of satchidananda parmatma that is the meaning of the 29th and 30th put together so yah maam sarvatra pashyati yah sarvatra maam pashyati sarvancha mai pashyati tasya aham na pranashyami sacha me na pranashyati this anvay is okay we understand the meaning there not much to be done so that is bhagwan's vachana here 
पूर्वश्लोकार्थम सम्यक दर्शन अनुद्य तत्फल मोक्ष अभिधीयते नो वॉट इज डन इज इट इज दर्ज सम डन ऑफ वॉट हेज बीन सेट सो फार पूर्वश्लोकार्थम वॉट एवर हेज बीन सेट इन दि अर्लियर श्लोक हेविंग रिपीटेड दैट एज इन फॉर कंक्लूजन हेविंग समराइज दैट अनुद्य एंड तत्फल मोक्ष अभिधीयते फल ऑफ दैट इज मोक्ष दैट इज बीइंग मेन्शन इन दि नेक्स्ट शो श्लोक थर्टी फर्स्ट श्लोक सर्वूत स्थित यो मं भजत्येकस्थित सर्वथा वर्तमानोपी सयोगी मयि वर्तते सर्वभूत स्थित यहां भजती वन हू वर्शिप्स मी हाउ सर्वभूत स्थित मं सर्वूत स्थित आय हू एम प्रेजेंट इन ऑल लिविंग बीइंग सर्वभूतेषु स्थित सर्वेशु भूतेषु स्थित ये सर्वभूत स्थित यह माम एंड हू इज परमात्मानम कृष्ण परमात्मा हू सीज दिस कृष्ण परमात्मा एज ए वर्शिप्स एज सर्वभूत स्थित हू इज देयर इन ऑल ऑल बीइंग्स हाउ नॉट एज एन इंडिविजुअल सिटिंग एट ईच प्लेस ही इज नॉट एन इंडिविजुअल ही इज नॉट सेगमेंटेड एट ऑल ईशावास्यम इदम सर्वम एज बी एज दैट Tattva which pervades everything as sat, which brings about existence to this prapancha as as chit, whereby one knows the entire prapancha and as ananta without any segmentation, such chit ananda and ananda swarup also through which subjectively and objectively he brings in ananda. That he that paramatma tat tamasi. That I am, and thereby Aham Brahmasmi Sarvabhuta Stitam Yo Maam Bhajati. One who worships that Paramatma as the All Pervasive Tattva in the entire Prapancha. How Ekatto Mastita. Thereby Aikya. Ekatto Mastita. See, if you say Paramatma is Eka, is one thing, and saying uh, there is only Paramatma, thereby Eka, are two different things. so as it is said there are many religions also not many religions there may be some who interpret other religions also as talking about one god as teaching one god so to say and in hindu darshan also also there may be many darshana shastra darshana philosophies which may say those philosophies also may say that there is only one god so but what advaita says and only advaita says only this shuddha advaita says no sorry uh, keval advaita not shuddha advaita is another uh, another sort of dvaita and they call themselves as shuddha advaita but keval advaita adi shankaracharya's uh, exposition of the advaita tattva as it is there in the shruti that keval advaita is the only one which says that this ekatvam is what it is there is only god there is nothing other than god so we don't have the segmentation whatsoever in any which way So thereby, ekatvam asti tah, uh, ekatvam asti tah. Here we'll see more of that. Ekatvam can have more meaning. We'll see in the Bhashya. Sarvata vartaman ha pi sa yogi mai vartate. Sarvata in any which way that person remains, that yogi remains, he remains in me because he is already merged. There is no see otherwise yogi mai vartate does not make any sense. There is no sense if it is not advaita for Krishna to say that. that yogi remains in me how can that yogi remain in you if he is worshiping you as with a dvaita bhava that is not possible thereby this has to be advaita ekatvam asita will have a uh, look see in the bhashya 31st shloka shastra adhyaya For some reason, it opened the fifth chapter. Something wrong with this uh, today. Or something wrong with the way I am using it. More likely. Okay. So what Bhagwan Bhaskar says? Yo maam pashyati vasu devam sarvasya atma nam. one who is the atma of everyone one who is present as i i i in every sentient entity he is the pratyagatma 
not separate, not watching over, not as karma phala data, but as I, I as the very content of the jiva, of the very content of the vritti, aham, aham vritti. As the very subject, as the very cognizer, as the very witness, Sakshi, who says I am the subject, that Yomam Pashyati Vas Sarvasya Atmanam Sarvatra Sarveshu Bhuteshu Sarvancha Brahmadi Bhuta Jatam Mai Sarvatmani Pashyati and one who sees everything in me. Sorry, 30th, why did it go to 30th? Okay. Uh, anyway, so we have seen that, so let's complete. The same Atmai Kattu Darshina Aham Ishwara Na Pranashyami Na Parokshatam Gamishyami. Always remain aparoksha. He always remains aparoksha, meaning he is one with that yogi. Sacha me na pranashati, sacha vidwan mama vasudevasena pranashati na paroksha bhavati. So both ways there is aikya, tasya mama che ekatma katwa. That is the reason. It is said in both ways to uh, take away the doubt that there is only one side merger, as in you are a part of Paramatma and Ausha. So that or the you are the overruled. All these ideas will go when both sides it is mentioned. The Aikya is not figurative. The Aikya is real. That can be established only in both ways. Only when it is said in both ways. So it is said, Ishara na pranash, aham na pranashami tasya. And then uh, other way also, mama vasudevasya na pranashati saha. Both ways. Why? Both ways the Aikya is true because there is, uh, the both ways is only from Vyavaharika thinking. There are no two at all. Swatma hinama atmana priya yo bhavati asmacha aham eva sarvatma ikatva darshi. Thereby, uh, and we see that atma is this sukasvarupa. We will not go into this in detail here. Priya eva bhavati. One is dear to oneself. This is, uh, it takes cue from Bhradarnika Shruti, where everything which is done is for Atma Swarupa Sukha. Everything is for Sukha and that Sukha is one's own Swarupa. Therefore, when Bhagavan is dear to you or when you are dear to Bhagavan, it is only because the inner self is dear and there is no separate inner self for Paramatma and you because the content of both is Ananda Satchidanand Swarupa. So we were looking at this, uh, you wanted to have a, uh, this Ekattva Mastita, have a look, see there. Sarvata sarva prakarehi vartamana api samyak darshi yogi mai vaishnave parame pade vartate nitya mukte vasa na moksham prati kenachit prati badyate ichyartha. Nothing else to be said here because Ekattva Mastita who remains in this oneness with me. So again, as I said, this Ekattva can be seen in two ways. One is that Atma is one. Ekattva Masita or Paramatma is one, but one here means only Paramatma or only Atma, meaning both are one, thereby uh, only Paramatma exists or only Atma exists or other way around as in Paramatma and Atma are one, thereby Ekattva Masita son, Sarva Bhut, Yaha, Yaha Astita, who is Ekattva Masita, who is uh, merged in this oneness or who is remaining as this one Tattva, Dervai Sarva Bhuta Stitam Yomam Bhajati and this Bhajati you can say uh, worship if you say or if you say as one who does uh, Seva whatever you are or Bhakti Bhava all that is what it is Advaita Bhakti by Ekattva Mastita it means by Advaita Bhakti or one who worships uh, as in Devo uh, Bhutva uh, Devam Yajit so even in uh, in puja puraskara what has to be done is that when you are worshipping the the worship is me this is the bhavana with one should do worship thereby the mantra itself says uh, deo bhutva deo yajit whoever you are worshipping you have to become that that's why you do anganyasa all this anganyasa is lost on dvaitins when you invoke the lord in you what are you doing you are in, when you invoke the lord in you you are the lord that is the bhavana with which the worship has to be done. That is not possible unless there is aikya. You cannot invoke in your anga and in your kara, nyasa, in all this. You cannot invoke the Lord unless the Lord is you. What is the invocation for? Otherwise, worship the idol. Invoke the Lord in the idol. But you, when you are worshipping the Lord also, you invoke the Lord through kara, nyasa, anga, nyasa, by invoking, by merger, by that uh, 
कल्पना दैट आई एम नॉट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम बट ऑल्सो डिफरेंस इज मेंटेन फॉर पूजा देर बाय दैट ऐक्य विल स्लोली कम कम थ्रू पूजा ऑल्सो दिस इज द भावना थ्रू भावना यू वर्शिप एंड देन द वे द भावना इज सो यू बिकम और द तत्व रिवील्स इट सेल्फ एज ऐक्य देर फोर सर्वभूत स्थितम यो माम भजती एकत्व आस्थित यो माम भजती देर बाय ऐक्य भाव भजती सर्वथा वर्तमान अभी सहयोगी मई वर्तते एंड देर बाय वेर एवर ही इज हाउ एवर ही इज दैट योगी इज वन विथ मी बिकॉज ही हेज गॉट एकत्व दर्शन एंड ही इज एकत्व आस्थित देर फोर ही कैन नेवर बी सेपरेट फ्रॉम मी ही ऑलरेडी नोज एंड ही हेज अंडरस्टूड तत्व कंप्लीटली थ्रू अपरोक्ष थ्रू साक्षात्कार एंड देर बाय ही कैनॉट एवर सेपरेट फ्रॉम मी दैट इज दी वचन ऑफ दी थर्टी फर्स्ट श्लोक बाय भगवान सो यह सर्वभूत स्थित यहाँ सर्वभूत माम भजती सह योगी सर्वथा वर्तमान अभी मई वर्तते सो दिस इज दन्वया हियर Uh, yeah so i have not done any uh, i have not marked the cases here but i am hoping that the cases are clear so we'll stop here we'll continue in the next part ha ekatmasya sarvatha vartamanah api sah yogi mai vartate he remains merged in me that is the vachana here Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Any questions? Yes, Anand. Uh, you mentioned uh, something called Shobana Adhyasa. Can you explain that? I mentioned this earlier, and I think uh, Bhavya had asked it uh, a few classes back. Shobana adhyasa is uh, adhyasa, you know, right? Superimposition, but shobana is the the value. See, uh, shobana is whatever. See, uh, for eyes, what is shobana? The beauty is shobana. For ears, what is this? Some melody is shobana. Some taste that you like, whatever. If if you like uh, some spicy thing. then that is shobana in in whatever is uh, whatever can be tasted in some food if you like sweet then that is shobana for you <coughs> but uh, whether sweet or uh, the, whether it is bitter or spicy that is the quality of the food but shobana is what see adding value to it that is subjective so i may like sweet you may like spicy but the same food need not be seen by everyone in the same way the way it is seen uh, so for me for example i do not want spice i don't have any added value to it but you have added value similarly for sweet i have added value you don't have it but the way you look it from uh, look at it from an objective perspective whatever that food is with whatever quality it has it, that is what it is Shobana Adhyasa is adding value where it does not belong. That's why I gave the example of gold, where value may or may not be, but as soon as you start adding value, it starts gaining more and more value. So that is Shobana Adhyasa, meaning superimposing a value where it does not belong. And what is the idea in all vishayas? Generally, we add a value through our tainted by our ragat desha and the actual. Result that we are looking at is sukha there. So the end goal of that shobana adhyasa is still sukha. So shobana adhyasa is seeing value where it does not belong. Really does not belong. Adhyasa itself is that, but shobana adhyasa is the uh, superimposition of the value, not the vishaya. Vishaya itself is superimposed really, 
but if we take vishaya as existent also but still that vishaya is as it is it cannot be separate for you and me but it is still having some subjective value based on each individual and his own or her own vasanas thereby some value is added and thereby the hankering for that object is that clear yeah anything else no anyone else okay i'll see you in the next part ha namaste